Get over here! Mortal Kombat Conquest, the great 90s underrated MK TV show explained. Mortal Kombat games took youngsters by storm as soon as they were released. People would line up in arcades to play the game. In the initial years, fans were more interested in the backstories and lore of the characters. As time passed, Boone and Tobias started expanding on these backstories, which led to a possibility of a live action and animated adaptations of the games. Characters like Sub-Zero, Melina, Shang Tsung, Scorpion, and more had really demented and tragic stories that appeal to players and general audiences alike. When the Mortal Kombat film came out in 1995, many considered it the best adaptation of a game into live action up to that time. The film felt like a long fight sequence from start to end, but fans wished for more blood, bones, and gore. Flawless victory. Director Paul Anderson and writer Kevin Droney maintained a fine balance between well-choreographed martial arts sequences and a crisp storyline. The 80s and 90s were a phase in which people were obsessed with transforming adult content into child-friendly cartoons. We saw adaptations of Robocop and Conan, and Mortal Kombat wasn't far behind. In 1996, an animated show named Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm was released. Driven by purpose and bound by honor, these are the Defenders of the Realm. Although kids liked it, it lacked the brutality and fatality that were a staple of the games. Next in line was the 1997 live-action film Mortal Kombat Annihilation. It fell flat on its face as the fans disliked the lack of a coherent story to bind the essential plot points related to Johnny Cage and Kwai Liang. Nevertheless, the Mortal Kombat fever was not receding anytime soon, and it led to the birth of a live-action serial named Mortal Kombat Conquest. The series took place 500 years before Liu Kang, when Earth was a rich planet lush with natural resources. The megalomaniac ruler of Outworld, Shao Kahn, wanted to take control of this planet, and the game of Mortal Kombat was created to decide its fate. It was supposed to be a battle between the heroes of Earth and Outworld. A major reason behind Conquest's success was the improvement in technology and a budget that suited the effective use of such technology. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The first episode of Mortal Kombat Conquest sets the stage for the epic battle between the great evil sorcerer Shang Tsung and the warrior monk Kung Lao, who is fighting to save Earthrealm. As he fights for his home, the Earthrealm. While Shang Tsung is working on the behest of the brutal warlord and ruler of Outworld, Kung Lao hails from the mysterious city of Zhu Xin and lives at the Temple of the Order of Light. This spectacular fight between two of the greatest warriors of the universe was to seal the fate of humanity and Earth. Should Shang Tsung win, Earthrealm would fall into the hands of the outworld ruler Shao Kahn. After your victory, Earth finally becomes my domain. The fight began and Shang Tsung was able to pin down Kung Lao, but he fought his way back and defeated Shang. However, Kung Lao didn't use his fatality blow and showed mercy to Shang Tsung. Humiliated by the defeat of his minion, Shao Kahn banished Shang Tsung to the Cobalt Mines. As a result, Tsung pledged revenge on Kung Lao. Throughout, Kung Lao was being helped and overseen by the Thunder God Raiden. After the fight, Raiden and Kung Lao returned to the Temple of Light so that Kung Lao could be together with Genevieve Rayland, his forbidden love interest and daughter of the Baron. However, he is told by Raiden that the win was only the beginning of a long struggle and not the end. But remember, in Mortal Kombat, victory is not the end. It's only the beginning. Kung Lao was meant to train new champions on Earth who would ultimately go on fighting the forces of evil. Within the first few minutes of the pilot episode, we learn what Mortal Kombat is, who the main characters are, and where the show is headed. It successfully builds a strong background of Kung Lao's dilemma and plight. Although his true happiness lies in uniting with his girlfriend, He cannot do so because his responsibilities as Earth's champion restrict him. Interestingly, actor Jeffrey Meek plays both Shao Kahn and Raiden. It is very fascinating because both the characters hail from different realms and are also the polar opposite as far as their intentions are concerned. 
the nefarious Shang Tsung didn't rest in his Cobalt Mines prison. He met a seductress named Vorpax, whom he instigated to further his plans, though she had her own agenda. Shang Tsung created a scorpion by sorcery and sent it to the Zhu Zin. The scorpion bit a guard named Takeda, who started to transform into a brainwashed warrior of Shang Tsung. With the help of Scorpion, Kung Lao was caught by the Baron, who didn't want him to marry his daughter. Kung Lao was sentenced to death, but Genevieve's guard, Siro, and an ex-thief, Taja, are met by a disguised Raiden who promises to help them free Kung Lao from Baron's clutches. The plan succeeds, however, a fully transformed Scorpion abducts Genevieve. Kung Lao, Taja, and Siro fail to protect the girl, and the hellish warrior Scorpion kills her. The only good thing that came out of this ordeal was that Kung Lao now accepted his fate as a protector of Earth against the schemes of Shang Tsung and Shao Kahn. Also, Taja and Siro would now continue to help him in his quests. The original name of Scorpion in Mortal Kombat Conquest is interesting because in the game Mortal Kombat X, Takeda is the protege of Scorpion himself. Nevertheless, we welcome the character because Mortal Kombat Conquest introduced a well-known game icon into the series without ruining the established lore and backstory. They were creative enough to think of a new method of bringing Scorpion's persona to life, and what better way than Shang Tsung's sorcery? There's just one hiccup. The Great Kung Lao is the original Earthrealm champion, and placing him in the same timeline as Scorpion and Sub-Zero seems a bit dodgy. After the mild failure in the events related to Scorpion, Shang Tsung devises another plan to seek his ultimate revenge. He joins hands with the Lin Kuei clan to seek a crystal that magically allows inter-realm travel. Kung Lao, Siro, and Taja have been protecting the crystal and fighting the ninjas of the Lin Kuei. Upon facing repeated defeats, the Evil Brotherhood sent its most powerful fighter who had the power to control water and its temperatures. This powerful warrior was Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero would give all three protectors of the crystal a hard time, but none would back down. Ultimately, Raiden intervened and intimidated Sub-Zero into retreating. However, the Ice Prince didn't accept defeat yet and was prepared to fight another day. Interestingly, this Sub-Zero is neither Bi Han nor his brother Kwai Liang. In fact, this one was a whole new person who had the ability to shape, control, and transform ice. This gives us the idea that Sub-Zero was more of a mantle than a person. The fight sequence between these four is well crafted, but there are certain issues in terms of picturizing the body doubles and the implementation of some dodgy effects. Meanwhile, Shao Kahn invaded the heaven-like realm of Edenia and killed the rightful ruler. He annihilated Edenia and took Princess Katana as his stepdaughter. However, the filthy Shao Kahn always saw Katana with lustful eyes. Katana understands this and hopes to rebuild her great home planet. But in order to do this, she would need the essence of Edenia, which is an orb of pure energy. The whereabouts of the essence are unknown and Shao Kahn allows Katana to go look for it. While Shao Kahn wants to destroy the essence and stop Edenians from reviving, Katana wishes to use it to bring Edenia to its former glory. She comes to Earthrealm and finds Kung Lao. Who are you? If you're Kung Lao, we need your help. They meet a warrior with the knowledge of the essence, but soon Shang Tsung reveals his presence via sorcery. Making matters worse is that the essence is also sought by Kali, who works for Shao Kahn, and Vorpax, who works for Shang Tsung. After a terrific battle, it is revealed that Kung Lao and Katana succeed in retrieving the essence of Edenia. The essence is in the pollen. It can be planted again. So the realm is simple flower. Moreover, they develop secret romantic feelings for one another. This was the end of the chapter, and from here on, we notice some grave continuity issues. In the battle to save the crystal that allowed travel between realms, Ciro underwent great injuries. Moreover, his ego is hurt as the Lin Kuei clan's thieves subdued him. Look, I said I was alright. You don't look very good. How would you feel? Ciro learns from a seductress named Kiri that if he could defeat two warriors living in the depths of Zhu Zin, then he could gain unimaginable powers and strength. Defeat two men and my life will change. Unfortunately, he is beaten to a pulp once again, only to be saved by Taja, who kills the two warriors. But their death released a diabolic warrior named Noob Saibut. Shao Kahn once banished this warrior into the depths of darkness, and now he sought to gain the king's favor by killing Kung Lao. What is his name? Kung Lao. 
The battle between the two ensues, but Noob Saibot is taken down with the combined forces of Kung Lao and Siro. If you have even a passing knowledge of Mortal Kombat, then you'd know that Noob Saibot was actually Bihan, but in this show, he's shown as a servant to Shao Kahn. Another contrast is that the show's Noob Saibot seems to be made out of some sort of oil and looks far from ferocious, so he's a new character with his own backstory and history. While some of us appreciate this version of Saibot, others are of the opinion that it's a blatant attack on the continuity and lore of the games. The next few episodes introduce us to famous Mortal Kombat characters and clans such as the Black Dragon. It is shown that the evil clan wished to plunder Kung Lao City and take whatever it deemed fit. In this quest, the Black Dragon would not spare anyone and kill whoever crossed their path. Continuity-wise, the Black Dragon clan came into existence after they split from the Red Dragon clan. So, the Red Dragon precedes the Black Dragon, but there's no mention of the Red Dragon in Mortal Kombat Conquest. However, if we ignore this little issue here, everything seems rather fine and acceptable. In the very next episode, we are introduced to Quan Chi. Mortal Kombat Conquest makes it look like Kung Lao's soul is the ultimate token to realizing all desires and wishes. Quan Chi is an evil sorcerer who could travel between realms without being detected, and he comes to Earthrealm with Xian, Mika and Sora to take Lao's soul and offer it to Shao Kahn in return for the desired price. These four use sorcery to bring out the worst in Taja, Siro, and Kung Lao. Taja is turned into a kleptomaniac thief, Siro is turned into a drunken savage, and Kung Lao becomes a killing machine. The three of them almost fight each other to death but are intervened by Raiden, who puts sense into them and a fight between Kung Lao and Quan Chi begins. In the end, Kung Lao is able to make Quan Chi retreat, though he plans on returning. I have no further need to be here. <sighs> this version of Quan Chi is a welcome move by the show's creators and we simply love the depiction. What's fascinating is that Quan Chi's demon Xian, Mika, and Sora seem like the show's version of Serena, Kia, and Jataka. As the show proceeds, Kung Lao's soul is once again under threat by Shang Tsung. This time he uses the purple warrior Rain, who can summon lightning from the skies. Rain surprises Kung Lao and lands fatal wounds on him, but is stopped by Taja who forces him to flee. Siro feels determined to take down Rain and ends up in a secluded temple, but he is attacked and wounded by Rain. Before Rain can finish him off, Katana comes into the picture and attacks. Rain flees once again because he could not dare to injure Shao Kahn's stepdaughter. When Khan learns that Earth's greatest warrior is injured, he feels that it is time to land the final blow on the warrior monk and he sends Melina to seal his fate. Melina was a clone created on the lines of Katana and she possesses Tarkatan blood and Adenian physiology. So her face looks hideous but Shao Kahn temporarily makes her look exactly like Katana. Melina meets Kung Lao as Katana and soon she starts falling in love with the man and her new looks. However, when the real Katana learns that an imposter is tendering to the fallen warrior monk, she rushes to Zhu Zin. We have to get to the trading post now. An amazing battle ensues between the two sisters and Katana emerges victorious. This portrayal of Melina has several issues. According to the games, Melina was a creation of Shang Tsung and she was a loyal follower of Shao Kahn. However, in the show, she tries to deceive the evil king because she apparently falls in love with Kung Lao. Secondly, she is supposed to be just another outworld girl who Shao Kahn chose to take down Kung Lao. If Kahn knew that this could work, then why didn't he send her earlier? This only makes Kahn look silly, which he really isn't. Anyway, this was where Chapter 2 ended. When Shao Kahn pitted Shang Tsung against Kung Lao, he didn't just want control over Earthrealm, but also Kung Lao's soul. Because constant failures left him frustrated, he resorted to summoning Sub-Zero and Scorpion to Outworld and offering them a chance to get half of Earth after they brought him Kung Lao's soul. And the prize? Half of Earth realm. However, both Scorpion and Sub-Zero desired the entire Earth for themselves. Naturally, they plot against each other as much as against Kung Lao, Siro, and Taja. Radiant tells Kung Lao that the only way he could defeat the deadly ninjas is through gaining as much knowledge as possible. But I will say this, know your enemy. Soon, one of the most epic battles of the show begins between the undead scorpion and the ice ninja Sub-Zero. <laughs> the 
They are an equal match for each other and fight without any restrictions. We have to agree that the fight was choreographed beautifully, but there are issues with continuity as the Shirai Ryu or Shirai Ryu clan hasn't yet been formed. The show's Scorpion is not Hanzo Asashi and Sub-Zero is not Bihan. So their rivalry doesn't fit properly and it was done only to please the fans of Mortal Kombat. It is later revealed that Vorpax is actually the firstborn daughter of a progenitor queen named Kriya. She mothered her entire race of beautiful female warriors on the lines of the Amazonians. Kriya seeks to take down Shao Kahn and meets Kung Lao and his team, but she is not all that she seems. Kriya has other nefarious agendas behind her beauty, culture, and knowledge. She produces hives with thousands of fetuses that grow into adult warriors in a matter of days. When the Earthrealm warriors learn about this, they destroy whichever hives they come across. Interestingly enough, a very peculiar alliance is formed between Kriya and a reptilian. While Kriya and reptilians form this alliance to take over Earth, Shao Kahn in Outworld gets restless. He fears losing Earth to Kriya. Kriya and her race seem to function as bees. They don't morph into insects, but their reproductive habits and social setup is very similar to that of bees. Can you think of a Mortal Kombat character with such features? Yes, Devora. If we think about it, Mortal Kombat Conquest keeps on giving characters for future versions of the game. First, there was Takeda, who became Scorpion's protege, and now we have Kriya, who seems like the foremother of the insectoid race. Kriya herself would have been an excellent fighting character. In Outworld, Shao Kahn grows further restless because Shang Tsung has failed to summon before him. Shao Kahn believes that Shang Tsung is working with Kriya to help her take over Earth. He summons Quan Chi to go to Earth Realm and bring him the traitor. Bring me Shang Tsung. On the other hand, Raiden instructs Kung Lao, Siro, and Taja to look for Shang Tsung. Meanwhile, there arises a brawl between Vorpax and her mother Kriya. Vorpax believes that too many of her soldiers have died for an unworthy cause and she confronts Kriya. When Kriya doesn't pay heed to it, Vorpax tries to mobilize Kung Lao, Siro, and Taja to kill her mother and save the race for good. Kill her, and we'll all leave. Return back to our own realm. After initial hesitation, Kung Lao agrees to be someone else's assassin, as he believes that by killing Kriya, he will be eliminating one of the greatest enemies of Earthrealm. Vorpax devises a plan to bring Kriya to the Earthrealm heroes. She tells her mother that it was necessary to kill the three humans before they could do further harm. Kung Lao will be alone tonight. Ambush him. After he falls, the other two will be easy to kill. Kriya falls into the trap and goes to fight, but Kung Lao, Siro, and Taja were already waiting for her. They kill Kriya and Vorpax immediately absorbs Kriya's energy and leaves to find Shang Tsung so that he could seed her a new army of soldiers who would be half sorcerers. All of this came to a catastrophic end when Shao Kahn made his final move by sending his shadow priests to Earthrealm to kill everyone who ever betrayed him or dared to stand against him. By everyone, we mean everyone. However, the fight sequences are rather rushed and forced. What we mean is that powerful people like Vorpax, Kung Lao, and Shang Tsung couldn't be killed with ease or within seconds. There should have been a greater level of tension and depth in the fight sequences. We believe that everyone who called the show a blunder was clearly mistaken. Mortal Kombat Conquest built a decent storyline. It doesn't always impede on the backstories of characters. In fact, it introduced new and likable characters. Moreover, the fight sequences are great and do justice to the game itself. Not only do we see stunts and flying kicks, but there's also a sense of clarity in them. We can notice who is being beaten to a pulp and how. Yes, there are undeniable flaws with the VFX, but then we're willing to let it go for the positive points of the show. Having said that, the acting of almost the entire cast is pretty basic. We aren't saying that they acted poorly, but no performances were worthy of winning awards either. But hey, the selling point of the show was martial arts and not really acting or story. The creators made sure to use Daniel Bernhardt and Jeffrey Meek and their real life martial arts skills in the show and the others were given stunt doubles. Conquest was considered a better spin-off of the original Mortal Kombat film than Mortal Kombat Annihilation. It would be cruel not to mention the plethora of amazing female guest stars like Angelica Bridges, Lee Sung Hee and Donna Hee, all of whom have posed nude for Playboy and other magazines. It's noteworthy that Mortal Kombat Conquest didn't just have a male audience, it also attracted scores of female viewers. The reasons were manifold and it will take another video to discuss that in length, but we'll just say that back in the day, people really loved it. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. 
Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>